Imagine you wake up one day to discover that artificial intelligence has become superior to human intelligence. Does this mean that we won't be able to control our destiny? Will this mean the end of the human species? We should not have facial recognition as a technology in the wild. We want to build smarter machines because then we can all play. I received a phone call from a friend. He told me I should be watching the last and decisive game between world champion Garry Kasparov and Deep Blue. Deep Blue is not a person, but a computer. I was so excited because Kasparov had already beaten Deep Blue a year prior in 1996, and it was time for the supercomputer's revenge. Honestly, at the time, I was rooting for the computer. To me, Deep Blue itself was astonishing proof of human intelligence. The best computer human scientists had made beat the greatest chess player. I thought they were all accomplishments of human intellect. Now I wonder if the future achievements of machines will still be considered ours. To build intelligent machines that are really like humans, we need to crack the problem of common sense. In the next 50 or 100 years, we will have AI systems which are instantly distinguishable from humans. Every day we see artificial intelligence evolve and interfere more and more with our daily lives. And people are starting to get afraid. They are terrified at the thought of artificial intelligence surpassing human intellect. Could this actually happen? What would happen to humanity if it did? Will we still exist? I am thrilled to be witnessing the rise of artificial intelligence, AI. The idea of having a virtual entity that can think with you, learn from you, or offer you a perspective different from your own is exciting. Will artificial intelligence become our virtual friend? Or should we worry about the technological singularity? The hypothetical point in time at which technological growth becomes radically faster and uncontrollable resulting in irreversible and unforeseeable changes to human civilization. Will this be possible in the future? Dilip George, an AI and neuroscience researcher who studies the relationship between machines and the human brain, may have an answer. Dilip George is on screen. Hi, Dilip. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. <laughs> Considering the complexity of human intelligence, do you think that artificial intelligence one day could really imitate it? The answer is absolutely yes, uh, because finally, we are also machines. Um, you know, humans are machines. We can understand the mechanism by which it works, just like we can understand how heart works, how a kidney works, how lungs work. Brain is an organ, yes, definitely a lot more complex than a uh, heart or uh, kidney, but still it's an organ which, which is about processing information or modeling information that is coming to, through the senses. Now, the question about, you know, it is complex, how long will it take to build something like this? Okay, could you tell me what is singularity? Okay, so... Uh, there are different schools of thought on this one. I think I, um, to me, there is no such singularity. There is no 
there is no one point um, you know when we achieve human level intelligence it will have its own limits it will have its own natural speed limits on how fast it can acquire data about the world uh, and how fast it can run experiments about the world and these things have natural speed limits in them do you think one day in the future that machines will be as efficient as humans in self learning what humans have is something called common sense when somebody tells you something they are able to put that in context and understand humans have this and robots do not have this right now to build intelligent machines that are really like humans we need to crack the problem of common sense and once we do that we can deal with machines and can be somewhat confident that oh they are understanding what we are saying not not misunderstanding the intent in a future where humanity and artificial intelligence can coexist do you think artificial intelligence will try to take over artificial intelligence ultimately is about making um machines that can understand data understand what's happening around them and make decisions just like humans can do if you look at you know what has happened over the history is that we always uh, want machines to do things that we don't want to do right so uh by having machines do uh, some of the the routine uh things that still requires intelligence to do we will find more things that humans will enjoy doing and and that will become our work you know what we used to call you know this interview we do, you know amar you would call this work uh, right think of saying that this is work to somebody 100 years ago right we want to build smarter machines because then we can all play <laughs> that's you know somebody said this <laughs> right and 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 that's exactly my thinking too you know yeah because this is play this is not work what we are doing currently is play and we can enable more people to play perfect thank you dilip okay awesome um thank you thank you for your time the question remains unanswered is singularity possible and if it is will it be the end of humanity do you want me to answer that question can you answer this question this is not the right question listen do you think you are smarter than me i should first evaluate your intelligence would you let me do that no of course not i won't If the chess world champion lost to a machine with artificial intelligence called Deep Blue, then what is going to happen to us? Check. You got taken by your queen and didn't realize that the danger came from the bishop. Where was the danger coming from? You know what? I'm not asking the important question. Excuse me. I've got to work. The important question is, why are we afraid of artificial intelligence when we are the ones creating it? aren't we the ones who teach it should we fear ourselves aren't we supplying ai with all the data it needs we make mistakes so isn't it possible for ai to also make mistakes and repeat our own biases and agendas which are not always noble or aimed at helping humanity perhaps we should rather fear this moment I know Muhammad Aurangzeb is one of the key people sounding the alarm over the dangers of AI. Hi Muhammad, how are you doing? Hi Amar, uh, thank you for having me. It's it's my pleasure to be here. Can you tell me how you see the future with artificial intelligence? Sure, so there are a few possibilities. One is that it, let's say in the next 50 or 100 years we will have AI systems which are indistinguishable from humans and that's going to be the norm. uh so one example is to think about chess just the fact that these machines are able to play better than humans that has actually revolutionized this game because now it's not 
So initially these machines were learning from humans, but now humans are learning from these machines. It's actually a hybrid of a human and machine, which taken together constitutes the best player. So it, yeah, so it's my speculation that more likely than not, it's going to be a collaboration between AI and, and uh, humans, which is going to lead the way. Do you think AI could be dangerous? Yeah, most certainly. And it's not just said it can be dangerous, it has been dangerous. Uh, so a lot of human rights activists and even researchers in AI, they have argued that you should not have facial recognition as a technology in the wire. And the reason for that is, a, is that there's loss of privacy. So combining facial recognition technology, so it gives the governments and large organizations uh, the technology and the ability to track people over the course of time. At the end of the day, AI and machine learning systems, they are probabilistic in nature, which means that they are not going to be right all of the time. For this possibility that you falsely label someone, it is going to be extremely high. A lot of these systems, especially when they're developed in the West, they have less accuracy on people of color. Their accuracy for, let's say, people of European descent, it's more than 95%, but let's say for brown skinned people, for East Asians, and especially for Africans, the accuracy is going to be much, much less. When you apply these things in massive scale, and especially in contexts where the rule of law is not very strong, let's say authoritarian regimes, the possibility of misuse is just great. We understood from Mohammed Aurangzeb that the dangers of artificial intelligence exist in every aspect of our daily life. Is the solution to revolt against technology and artificial intelligence? Should we isolate them from our lives? Reduce our dependence on them? I don't think this is practical. We use AI in our daily lives without noticing it. When we surf the internet, shop online, and post on social media, better yet, maybe the episode you are watching right now has been suggested by an AI algorithm. When we apply for a bank loan, AI will decide whether we are eligible for it. When buying a flight ticket online, AI calculates the price we pay. Artificial intelligence is everywhere. And with time, it will keep on increasing. During my research, I read a study that mentioned that by 2030, the size of AI's investment would reach $320 billion in the Middle East. So would it be possible to live with AI without being exposed to unknown risks? Can we restrain artificial intelligence and control it? Can we teach it ethics? Of course we can. But the question remains, which ethics? As Muslims and Arabs, our ethics remain clear, whereas the West is leading the race in developing technology. Where do we stand in the war on artificial intelligence? Dr. Mohammed Ghali, professor of Islam and biomedical ethics, has long studied this matter. أول حاجة فيه إنه ضعف دور الدين في المجتمع وضعف دور الدين في العلاقة بين العلم والأخلاق بشكل عام مش فقط في الذكاء الاصطناعي إذا تحدثنا عن العالم الإسلامي فدين موجود إلى حد بعيد لكن العلم مش موجود فدي نقطة إنه دور الدين ضعيف في العلاقة بين العلم والمجتمع الأمر الثاني هو سيطرة اقتصاد السوق والمال وبالتالي الذكاء الاصطناعي ايضا مولود في هذا السياق سياق اقتصاد السوق وبالتالي سنحكم عليه بانه فعل اخلاقي ومقبول اذا كان يدر ارباح ماليه واذا كان لا يدر ارباح ماليه فيبقى شيء غير مقبول في المجتمع ولن يحصل على تمويل الامر الثالث في هذا السياق هو وجود شركات التكنولوجيا العملاقه التي اصبحت اقوى من الدول هل الدول المسلمه هتبني الات ذكيه مختلفه عن بقيه العالم والله أنا أعتقد أنه في جزء من التقنية 
جزء منها عالمي يونيفرسال يعني لما أن نكون تطبيقات الذكاء الصناعي تحسن صحة الإنسان وتعالج أمراض لا نستطيع علاجها في الوقت الحالي ففي جزء منه عالمي كوني سيقبل أو سيرفض بناء على أخلاق عالمية يعني لما نعمل أدوات ذكاء اصطناعي تساعد الناس في خداع البشر ونعمل أدوات ذكاء اصطناعي تخترق خصوصيات الناس وتأتي بمعلومات وتوديها مثلا لجهات يمكن أن تستغلها استغلال سيء سواء استغلال تجاري أو استغلال عسكري أو استغلال سياسي إلى آخره لا شك أن هذه الأمور ستكون مرفوضة من قبل الجميع واضح أن العالم الإسلامي راغب جدا وجاد جدا لأسباب مختلفة قد نتفق ونختلف عليها لكنه جاد جدا في أنه يكون جزء من هذه الثورة القادمة والسوق العربي سوق كبير جدا ومش بس كعدد ولكن كأموال يعني يقدر يضخ أموال فأظن ما أظن أبدا أن يكون مثلا فيسبوك أو أبل أو غيرها عندها أي إشكالية في أنه تعمل أشياء باللغة العربية متشكرين جدا جدا كل أمنياتنا الخالصة مع السلامة مع السلامة مع السلامة What can I help you with? We're at the root of the problem. The more we depend on technology that we haven't produced, the more we are vulnerable to it. We all had a comment removed from our social media because an AI algorithm decided it did not fit its code of conduct. When will we be the ones choosing our criteria? When will we open the doors to the future? Open the door. Maybe if singularity were to happen, we would at least be ready for it. That's if if it hasn't already happened. What can I help you with? If singularity, as they refer to it, were to happen, would human beings actually feel it? That is a good question. <laughs>